Hi, this is Nicole Rivera, and you're listening to the Stop Writing Alone podcast. For the month of April, I had signed up for Natalie Goldberg's Writing Down the Bones online course. It was like this huge opportunity because Natalie famously does not like the internet. So when I saw it pass by in my inbox, I said, I don't know how, but I got to get in on this. So it started last weekend. I mean, we, we actually had access to the course back in March, but our first live call with Natalie was this past Saturday. And we have um, office hours with her teaching assistant this week. And so a lot of the live stuff is going on during April. So I'm just trying to do the course content alongside it. And if you're not familiar with Natalie Goldberg, I just sort of just burst into this. <laughs> she is the author of the Writing Down the Bones book, most famously, but she has many other books um, on the writing practice, on writing memoir. Um, and basically, Natalie's whole jam is about what she calls the writing practice. And if you haven't read or own, and if you haven't seen Writing Down the Bones book, to me, that is a book that needs to be on every writer's shelf because it's one of those books. It's a ridiculously easy read. Um, it's kind of like each chapter is, could be an own, its own standalone essay on writing uh, on some part of the writing process. And um, it's a it's a book that I pull off my shelf all the time. You know, it's one of those that I'm always referencing and going back to. But it was a book that I was introduced to fairly early into my growth as a writer. Uh, I would say probably the first book that was on writing that I ever read was Stephen King's On Writing because in high school I was a big Stephen King fan and then he wrote a book about his process and I was like, cool, let me check that out. I got an audio book um, for a road trip that my husband and I did when we were dating and listen to it. And that was it. That's all I knew about writing books before I got like really in um, writing community and started meeting other writers. And when I did meet other writers, one of the first books that was recommended to me was Writing Down the Bones. I, I cannot remember the order if it was Writing Down the Bones or Bird by Bird, or if they were both recommended at the same time. But um, this book was an absolute game changer for me because it really opened up the idea of writing practice. So when we all entertain the idea of becoming a writer, then the next question is, well, what do you write? Do you write short stories? Do you write novels? Are you a poet? Are you a screenwriter, a songwriter? What do you write? And um, those are great questions to answer. But what Natalie gets into is the practice that we have to do before any of that. And this is, there's a point, there's a piece in the Writing Down the Bones book. She says, you know, nobody second guesses a football team having practice where they just play and do different, uh, you know, parts of the game without really playing against each other with no, no point except just practice. But no one's talking about writers practicing. Um, I mean, that book was written very, very long ago. We all talk about it now. But Natalie's practice is very specific in that she is also very steeped in uh, meditative practices. So she, what she considers the, write, the writing practice is a sitting meditation, which could be up to 10 minutes of just sitting and breathing. Uh, and then opening up a notebook, very similar, by the way, when, when we talk about the writing practice, it's going to seem very similar to the morning pages practice that we've been introduced to through Julia Cameron's Artist Way. Um, but with uh, the similarities are that Natalie also recommends notebook, pen, not a computer, really getting tangible with your writing and just letting yourself go not worrying about spelling, not crossing out, don't think, just write, connect to the words, connect to the page, connect to the pen. Those are the quote unquote rules. But one difference that I think Natalie offers is that she comes at her writing practice typically with a topic to write on. And she's 
she supplies so many through her book, Writing Down the Bones. She also made a Writing Down the Bones uh, deck of cards, which has loads of topics. And of course, through the course, she's been giving us topics. Um, but you can make them yourself. Uh, just as a quick example, the first topic that she gave us in one of the lessons was, tell me everything you know about mashed potatoes. That's it. 10 minutes, write. Don't let your pen stop moving. Just keep going. You're not at a feverish pace. You're not trying to beat the clock or anything. Just a constant flow. If you think about the idea that you're coming to this page right after a sitting meditation, you're kind of in this stillness state. Your mind is kind of clear and you're just you're just going through. You're just writing whatever you know about mashed potatoes. And it's not like this is an essay and you have to, you know, be thorough about your knowledge of mashed potatoes. You could start off and say, I hate mashed potatoes. And you know what else I hate? And then just keep going. And you could be writing about something else entirely after, you know, uh, one freeze. You could even say, I don't want to write about mashed potatoes and just write whatever. Um, another topic that that Natalie gave in her book, but also gave in her class, which is one that I've shared with the community a number of times, which I love, is just starting with the words, I remember. And you start writing. And you write about whatever you remember. And anytime you find yourself pausing, like you can't remember something, you just start again with, I remember, until your time is up. Just keep writing. And then you can follow up that writing exercise with, the next topic I don't remember and follow the same uh, situation. So this type of writing practice I've been familiar with since reading um, Writing Down the Bones. I'll be honest, I wasn't really sticking to the meditation beforehand. I was doing the practice, you know, whenever. Um, but the meditation bit combined with the writing coming to the page has been very very interesting. But the most interesting aspect that I've been learning from this course is that Natalie says we should read these things aloud. <laughs> and so I'm recording this episode right after the first office hours that I experienced where this is in fact what we just did. We were taken in as a group um, and we all did our meditation and then the, the leader of the group, which is, uh, Dar Dorotea Mendoza, Natalie's teaching assistant, gave, she gave us a topic. Um, what was the first topic? We had to write everything I know about butter. Gave us 10 minutes to write about that. And then the second topic I believe was a place I need to return to. Yeah. In 10 minutes, we had to write about that. And then we were put into breakout rooms. There, I was in a breakout room with, with uh, there were four of us all together. And we had to read aloud what we just wrote. Coming from my history of morning pages, where morning pages are written and never read, <laughs> not even by you, I was like, whoa, this is amazing. We're going to read this aloud. And it was actually quite beautiful. So the process was that we went in alphabetical order by the first name, uh, you know, by our names on Zoom. And the first person read their first piece about what was the first one was about butter. And then I ended up being second. So after a breath, a moment, breath no comments, no judgment, no feedback, nothing, just a moment of silence and breathing. Then I began and I read my piece on butter. Then the, then we did the same moment of silence. We sort of bowed to each other. And then um, the third person read their piece on butter. And then we repeated again for the fourth person. And then this is a beautiful aspect too. This is a huge community that's come together for Natalie. And it's it's global right? So not everybody writes in English as a first language, and so they shouldn't be expected to. So uh, we have 
members there that are writing and reading aloud in other languages. So that was wonderful that one of the people in my group actually read in French and and it was just wonderful to listen to. And that even though I don't understand all of the French words, the sentiment of the writing was fully realized and just gorgeous. And it's not like we can give feedback or comment anyway. We're just being present to listen to each other's words. And once we went through that first round, then we went back to the first person and then um, she wrote what she had written on where she should return. And then I read what I should return and the third person and the fourth person. And then that was it. And then we were done. No comments, no reflections, no feedback. Um, And I have to say, I was really nervous about this. But somehow, and, I, and I'm trying to wrap my head around this because this literally just happened, somehow it made those words in my notebook feel more my own. And I don't think I was worried too much about judgment. I mean, there was some personal stuff in there, you know, but yeah, there's something that's more alive about what I wrote just now because I read it and three people heard it. And so this is a really, I'm going to be doing it again. We're going to be doing it twice a week for the whole month. Um, But it is something that I may try to regularly incorporate into my own writing practice, not just this practice of the meditation and writing on a topic, which I already love. I love all of that. And it, it just does feel like true practice because what Natalie is saying is that when we show up and do this type of writing on these topics, we're attuning ourselves to writing about details and figuring out what's the important bits. We're just letting our mind um, get out of the way and letting the writing do the writing. This is the thing that that Natalie always says, let the writing do the writing. So um, all of that I love and, and do and try to encourage others to do. That's wonderful. But the reading aloud thing may be a new uh, aspect. And and you know that I love reading aloud when we talk about our fiction. And that feels incredibly safe to me because it's not personal. Um, so I'm really curious that at this point, at least right now, there wasn't anything that felt unsafe about reading uh, a journal entry. And maybe it's because it was the topic. Maybe it was because we were all writing about the same topic. Maybe it was because the rules are we aren't to really speak outside of it. I'm not sure. Um, But it was a wonderful experience. So I'm curious, and this is the question I've been asking the happy campers this week. Do you have a writing practice? This is not like the time of day that you show up to write for your novel or your short stories or whatever, your project. Do you have a a time of day or something that you're doing that is writing for the sake of writing so that you are getting to practice every week or every day? You know, many people do morning pages, and I think that probably counts for this, but maybe it's something else. And I'm just curious if you have a practice like this. Um, if you don't, again, I can't recommend writing down the bones enough. I'll put a link in the show description. Um, so that you can check it out and, and grab a copy if you don't have it. Um, but yeah, I'm loving this. I'm looking forward to sharing with you when I've completed the course, but I couldn't wait. I mean, there's just so much juicy, wonderful stuff happening already. Um, and Natalie's big, big, um, message this week for all writers is read, read, read read voraciously, make sure you read in whatever category that you want to write in. Um, but don't stop reading, just keep reading. And, um, so I just wanted to pass that along to you, but thank you for listening. And I will talk to you again next week. If you are doing the 24 hour challenge this weekend, uh, the 24 hour story challenge that we talked about last week, then I will wish you good luck. I will be right alongside you. And, um, yeah, that's about it. I will, I will, like I said, talk to you next week. This Friday, though, is my Fiction Friday. So on the Envy Rivera YouTube channel, there will be a brand new writing prompt for you. And over on storyhoarder.substack.com, there will be a brand new story for you. It's actually an oldie, another oldie, something about tulips. 
I'll just leave it at that. You can go read it. A fun flash fiction. Um, But thanks for listening. And I have to say thank you to the brand new review that we got for the Stop Writing Alone podcast. So hang on. Let me read that one to you because I was so excited. Okay, so I was really excited to see a new review on the Stop Writing Alone podcast from Kim Smuga. Thank you so much, Kim. Here's what Kim wrote. Most writing podcasts focus on techniques or how to get published. Stop writing alone is less for your writer brain, more for your writer soul. Writing is lonely, a lot of living in your own head. Having a writing group, whether it's critique group or just people you write with, makes a big difference whether you give up or stick with it. Nicole explains so much about what goes into finding and forming nurturing writing communities. Episodes have lots of links and ideas, and she has great interviews with other writers about their practices and communities. So thanks so much, Kim. And for anybody who hasn't done a review for the podcast yet, you can do it wherever you listen to uh, your podcast. Um, definitely iTunes has a space there for, for writing reviews. Um, but I do believe Spotify does as well. And every review makes a difference. So I am immensely grateful. And um, yeah, thanks so much. Another uh, good news in in that sort of realm was that the Envy Rivera YouTube channel finally hit 200 subscribers. I nearly fell over because it seemed to be in that 190s for a really long time. So it was a big, big deal for me. So thank you for everybody that subscribed to the YouTube channel. Thank you for everybody that listens, subscribes to the podcast and has written reviews. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm always, always grateful for every little bit. So thank you again. Have a wonderful week and I'll talk to you again next Thursday.